This week, we start into chapter 14, which covers uh, stored procedures and functions. Uh, we start talking about uh, procedural logic, PL SQL, and the use for it whenever that you're coding an application uh, that interfaces with the database. You're coding in C, C Sharp, Python, some other type of coding language. And they use functions, methods, and stuff like that throughout the coding language. It does not use uh, just straight text like the SQL language we are learning. So years ago, decades ago, they come up with procedural logic. It allowed you to create stored methods and functions in the SQL implementation. They made it easier to call or use the code, send communication back and forth between an application and the database itself. So instead of having to embed into your C++ code, select star from some table, you'll create a, a normally a function or a stored procedure. PostgreSQL, um, the version we are running, only has the create function. They have implemented create procedure and later versions that have recently come out in the last oh, 12 months or so for Postgres. But the create function covered most of the stuff. Procedure and function could do both. But now they've uh, they try to follow the, the standard a little bit closer. But most vendors don't follow the standard that's written in the book. They're pretty close on a lot of the ways that it's created, but they did have this created years before it was actually written in the standard. So none of the vendors follow it perfectly. So um, beyond the chapter, you're going to have to do extra reading and looking at how Postgres version 10, don't look at version 11 or 12, but version 9 and 10 do functions and how that they use a function to replace a procedure. I'm going to create a simple function here that simply displays a table. So if I was to execute a function uh, call like test1 parentheses inside of a like C sharp, if I run something like that, it would output the table into my application. But I have to generate that code within the database first. So I can link up my application and call it. So we do a create function, and you give it a name, test. I'll just give a test one. Sometimes you do create create or replace function. <clears throat> if you're updating a function, you can have a create or replace. Uh, lots of times I just want to drop the function and recreate it. Some things you cannot update and replace. So create function, you give it a name. Function needs to return something, typically. So I'm going to return our returns plural. What do I return? I could return text and integer. I could text a, return a variable. I want to return a whole entire table. So returns table, and this is a little complex. You have to specify the columns and the data types that are being returned. So if I want to return the genre table, there's a genre ID and its integer value. There's also a name and it's var care variable or character varying, which is var care. So any columns that you're going to return, you do have to type those out. And then as and you can specify a variable name between the dollar signs, or if you just want to not really reference a variable name, you might, if you're in a coding language, kind of depends on what language. You could give this some type of 
of name um, G info or something like that, but I'm just going to leave it simple and use dollar sign dollar sign. After that, you'll have the you'll have the block of code, the block of SQL that is actually going to be executed, and you have to start with a begin and an end, and then what are you going to output? Uh, you're outputting or what are you going to save all of this as actually is what this is. You're saving it into a variable. We're returning a table as this blank variable name and what is going to be stored in this variable name would be the stuff that's, that's generated between the beginning and end. So it's stored into there. It's, it seems like a little bit backwards. A lot of languages you'll have your variable equal to something but the way this function is it's all your code executes and the output of it will be stored as dollar sign dollar sign you end it with what type of language <clears throat> you're going to use uh, some of the languages python uh, procedural logic sql or some of the languages that are supported there's others that you could look up for this class, we'll just use procedural logic, PL, Postgres, SQL. So procedural logic, Postgres, SQL is the language that this is written in. Now up here in the begin, I can go ahead and write what code is going to be run. Um, so I want to re, uh, return. What am I returning up to this top part? Return a query. A query is just a you know a simple select statement that you're getting getting output for. And I'm just going to select everything from the genre table. So this looks quite complicated. I mean, select from genre. We'll just get the output of a table. We had to have all this extra coding in here, but if you need to interface your database with a coding language, then you normally build this stuff out. So we've learned all of the SQL commands and stuff up to this point. And now we're learning some extra. How's it actually implemented? And a lot of uh, database systems, it's implemented like this. The code's embedded into functions that are called from a programming language. So let me go ahead and execute and see if I've got any errors. So it executed correctly. Lots of little components here. Name of the function. What the function returns and then as some variable name <clears throat> you have a beginning and ending block where you put your actual SQL code in and you gotta specify is it returning an integer um, a float is it returning a whole entire query in our case when we're returning table we return an entire query and then the language that you're returning So if you were to run this from a coding language, you might have a database connection code, and inside that database connection code, you'd just run a test one, typically, and it would execute. You'd have to learn from a coding language how it interfaces with the database. We don't have a extra language to try this from, so I can try to see if it works using SQL language, I can select everything from that function that we just created. Now, this is not typical to do this because you'd normally be pulling this from an application language. But if I execute that statement, 
if I spell it right. Oh, looks cute. And simply run the code and show me the contents of the table. So yes, that seems a lot more complicated, but when you need this interfaced with a coding language, this is how lots of SQL are, are done. Instead of embedding this code inside of your, your C Sharp, C++, Python, or whatever it is, you can create these functions. Okay, so that's the basic. We don't have any inputs, we don't have any outputs. And I'm going to keep this video short and just show the basic. How do you return just a simple query? So you can maybe, I want you to do some practice. Maybe maybe create a test one, test two, test three, and just display information out of two or three different tables and practice creating something simple like this. And I'll have some more videos when we'll take some inputs and outputs.